Usually channels are never enough. And, uh, you know, everybody thinks about the application of uh, motors because, uh, of course, normally you want to see the three phases, voltages and currents. But in reality, engineers want to see on mixed domain scopes as much as they can. That means that they want to see analog signals, digital signals, as many as possible. I think it's more the need that I've seen from engineers who want to see a more system view of their board. So in the past, I think we used to have different domains and each person was characterizing that one domain. And, and, but rather today we see more an end-to-end -end analysis. So that's why, for instance, our oscilloscope have inputs that you can adjust and set depending on what you need to do, depending on the probe that you plug in, uh, either to be analog or eight digital channels. So, for example, if you have an eight channels oscilloscope, this can become a 64 digital channels oscilloscope. So yes, there are still domains in, in different engineering cycles and so on, but people also want to see the whole end, end product and see how it performs. And validating that, you need to see a lot of different domains. The main address for the eight channels, that's because the multi channels need to be due to some tiny signals. We need to use a synchronized synchronization mechanism when the engineers implement the circuit debugging and the retrieving the signals. The time base is the same for everything. It's very precise. It's, there's no jitter, right? So you, you can be sure that you can really relate events that happens in time one to the other. And the most important one is uh, all the uh, eight channels can be synchronized uh, simultaneously. That means we can use a specific trigger point to see the, uh, each channel's uh, phase difference and the time difference uh, uh, simultaneously. And navigate in the history of the acquisition as well, so that you can go backwards and see what happens when some specific data was sent on a digital bus, for instance. Like the biomedical system, the signals uh, when we use the electrocardiogram, yeah, like the doctor to inspect the patient's uh, uh, biomedical signals uh, at their body. For example, just you like to test the electrocardiogram. You have many test points over eight channels, right? Motors, of, as I said, is, is, is one of the key applications for multi-channels. You know, when you, when you test motors, you just don't want to measure the voltages and current. You want to know, for instance, what the speed of the motor is. You want to measure the torque, right? All this data from sensors needs to be acquired and to be related in time with all, what happens with the voltages and currents. You can, you can really connect your sensors output to the scope. Well, actually, we have multiple solutions for that. We have data acquisition systems with multiple channels. You can plug in a card. You can have hundreds of channels. And these, uh, these cards can really detect signals from any type of sensor. It could be temperature. It could be velocity, right? It could be whatever you need. And all this data, you know, can be correlated with the acquisition of the oscilloscope. So think about FPGA engineers, designers that wants to see how a digital bus correlates with something happens in the analog world, but at the same time they might want if like a RF carrier signal uh, goes up in the air, right? And they want to see this uh, correlated in time. So they want to connect all of this equipment to just one measurement unit and they can do it with multi-channel scopes. So you can actually see the, the frequency domain. So you see your, your, your frequency response of, of whatever you're trying to measure. You see the time domain view. You see the, the logical uh, messages that go through. So you can use logic probes to actually probe on to an I squared C line, an SPI line. So just control signals or so on. Maybe it's a particular message that's being sent. You can find where exactly your problems are in your system by actually setting the scope to actually find this particular message, okay, what does the frequency look like? What does the time look like? And so For example, just like the Regos MHO DHO 5000 series, we have the four ADC by two channels using the together by one and two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. So if we 
open a half channels, that means the sample rate will be divided by, by one's time. Yeah. But if you open for the full channels, that means the sample rate will be quarterly separate divided. Yeah. Just like the if we use the four giga sample per second, the four channels, that means we just uh, have the one giga sample per second. Today, the limitations are very minimal and there is basically no compromise on the bandwidth aspect, for instance, right? So what you just regulate yourself is the sample rate because maybe you want to have like, uh, you need for a specific standard to sample, uh, you know, very fast, like uh, 50 giga sample per second. And you can have it, for instance, uh, only on two channels, the sample rate. This high uh, performance uh, of the new oscilloscopes are only possible when all these features are built into the FPGA and the programmable hardware. The processor, the processor can't um, analyze so, uh, so many data in a short time. The FPGA can uh, parallelize it and analyze a lot of data parallelized and uh, yeah, brings up the performance a lot. Otherwise, if you want to use all channels at the same time, then you know you go to 25 giga sample per channel, for instance. So that's the compromise. Of course, that depends on the model that you choose. You want really to uh, make sure that you detect a bursty signal only when the signal is there and not during the intervals that where the signal is not there. You don't want to use the memory. That's why you segment the memory, right? It's called the segmented memory, right? So you can. Uh, basically uh, select uh, the frames that you want to capture the shot on and, uh, and just save them and uh, avoid storing data when the, when the signal is not there, right? And then you can do whatever you want. You can overlap them and you can have a search algorithm to search for uh, something that, is, uh, that has a special shape on these uh, frames that you want to capture. One really nice tool that we have on our oscilloscopes is a zone trigger. So this allows you, from a traditional trigger point, it's like a level that you have, and the signal should cross that level. But when you don't know where it could be, or what that level is, or so on, or what that shape looks like, you can create zones, or shapes, if you may, on the trace itself. And then whenever the signal hits that trace, that acts like a trigger condition. And this zone is actually done in hardware, so it's done in our ASIC. So you still get the really fast performance of the oscilloscope as well. So, um, for example, if we have an EMI issue or so on, we can actually look and monitor the FFT, um, so the frequency domain, and we can actually set a zone area that we expect, okay, that this signal should never cross this area or so on. We can leave that running over a period of time, and as soon as the signal crosses or we see an interference, we can actually capture that uh, interference and actually see, okay, we, and if we had everything connected, so logic probes, um, maybe current probes or so on to monitor the power line and also our, our data signals itself, and we're actually seeing everything that's going through and we can actually quickly identify, oh, this message was sent, that's the wrong message if you like. <laughs> Very infrequent message has come through, it shouldn't have come through. But it, it, it's there, it's, it's been caught, and it's exactly at this point when we see an interference happen. So we can identify just by having this whole system view of this multi-domain capability.